Um, so I'm Dr. David Kennard, one of the founders of Nutrition Innovation. Uh, we had an important milestone uh, last year that um, that we passed by signing the the, um, uh, the collaboration agreement uh, with Heston to be able to focus on what we're calling these foods for thought. And, and Heston, you know, in looking uh, over that time uh, that you've spoken about, there's a really important, the last few years, there's an acceleration of just this gut microbiome and particularly the gut-brain axis. But, but if so, so coming from it, with all those Michelin stars you've got and the food innovation side, how, how do you reconcile and what can we do with the uh, the food uh, the food that we eat and how how's it going to affect the gut brain axis? Do you think? I think it's the combination of the two things. All the work that you've been doing on 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 actually having food that gets the little fellas in our gut to actually go to work. Working, they've got to work for their reward as well by digesting the food from the fiber and the cellulose mm. and stuff. But it's that emotional sense by by changing our relationship with food through curiosity and discovery we can then value more mouthfuls of food so we become fulfilled rather than looking at being full. And there's lots of talk about food shortage. Now, at its basic level, we just need to eat less. But if you tell people to eat less, now I don't think we just need to. That's, that, forget the word just, actually. If we, if we value more mouthfuls, we will naturally eat less. But you can't tell people to eat less because that's judgmental. But there's a whole mm. world of discovery waiting for us if we mm. can think about what's happening when we eat, how do we feel, how do we smell, how do we hear, how do we touch, etc. Yeah, there's, um, there's certainly an evolution. Um, last year, for example, one of the things that we did was launch uh, New, New, um, UK Life. It's a sugar powder. Uh, it allows 70% sugar reduction. It's got protein and it's got fiber. And you, you think about foods like that, Heston, and the... Um, the importance of, of the way you cook as a chef. How do you make those sort of foods palatable and attractive? Uh, and, and knowing for well that it's going to feed the microbiome, you know, it sounds very un unromantic, doesn't it? You're feeding the microbiome, but there's this unique connection between uh, the gut and, and the brain. So how do you cook for that? Well, I think the cooking for that, if you look at the fact that what we're looking, what we're doing now is that there's, there's, <clears throat> You've got the foods. So the way the foods are grown or they're harvested, um, if you look at um, – you've got the ingredients and the origin of the ingredients and, and the makeup of those ingredients, then the way that it's prepared. But for me, what, what, what's a really exciting area that, that, that we haven't really looked at that yet that you and I have been talking about is the – is this ability to be able to storytell? So I touched on these things of shared beliefs, the importance of shared beliefs. With storytellers, there's a reason why the Bible or the Quran or Homer or Star Wars or Harry Potter, why these great stories attract people. And, and there's, a, you know, there's a storytelling uh, structure called the hero's journey. Mm. And we connect because effectively, every human being is on, on their own hero's journey. And so, mm. if, we could, if we could somehow teach self-awareness through storytelling, we can discover that maybe, you know, if you, if you think about biting into a lemon, your mouth waters. Just with the thought of that acidity, how you can, you can reduce uh, salt in foods or, or, or sugar in foods, for example, by adding... Vanilla. Vanilla is not sweet. Vanilla is bitter. But we think of it being sweet, just like the smoked salmon mousse experiment, because we grow up with vanilla in sweet things. So a little bit of an addition to vanilla, can re you can actually reduce the sugar. But So that, 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 that's that one side of, of the approach. Then you add to it all the, the work that you've been doing, where in addition to that, you actually consume um, um, say, for example, with new cane, you consume a sugar which has more fibre and more cellulose and more polyphenols. So you're, 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 you're tackling the, the subject. I want it, it's a problem, but potentially it's a problem with a fabulous solution. You're coming at it from oh, gut, brain, gut. It's, the, it's a two-way street. Um, it's, it's a fascinating so story, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Of food, yeah. Because uh, we've been thinking about it strictly on the science, and uh, you know, our research teams getting together across the globe to be able to to pull together the, the you know the science behind it. But you're, I love your perspective from the sensory aspect uh, of it um, uh, to be able to uh, you know create foods for thought and 
foods that stimulate the, you know, your mind and, and then that, you know, that, that physical connection and emotional connection. Amazing. And I think one big thing that you and I have been passionately talking about over the last couple of years now is the fact that, and, and this is before COVID, <clears throat> but it's become much more relevant now, is that we are hurtling towards um, a pandemic. If there is already a pandemic, <clears throat> there is already a pandemic of mental health. And we are hurtling towards that, that a, a, a much greater pandemic of mental health. The problem is when it becomes that big, I mean, it's already big that people aren't, they're becoming a, more aware of it. But when it, all diseases of the modern, um, the modern Western world, let's say, are caused by, they're basically inflammation of the immune system. So whether it's diabetes or Parkinson's, Alzheimer's or cancer, multiple sclerosis or all of these diseases, inflammation of the immune system and stress is a massive inflamer of the, of, of, the, of the immune system. And when that pandemic becomes that great, what are we going to do? Stick everyone on, on antidepressants. So thank God for modern medicine. Thank God for chemotherapy. Thank God for vaccines. Thank God for these, oh. these things that keep them invented to, in emergencies. Oh. But we shouldn't be oh. using those as preventative medicine. The preventative medicine is exactly the work that we've been talking about. The foods that you consume and your relationship with the foods that you consume. The great cool thing about yeah. that, it's so, in the process, if we can make that progress full of curiosity, discovery, you've got an adventure, you can do it with being playful, you can do it with laughter, human connectivity. It's so valuable. So there is a really exciting world out there, the, the world ahead of us potentially. But we've got to we've got to do something. Look, it's an exciting future. As our, as I said before, as our research join uh, our research teams joined together um, across the globe in France, um, uh, United Kingdom, uh, Holland, uh, Singapore, Australia, Canada. As as we all come together, and indeed this conference, uh, uh, the FFT conference. Um, and San Francisco to, to uh, invite others, particularly from uh, North America, to actually join us in, in this uh, in this movement going forward. Foods for Thought, it's a great initiative. Um, Hester, thank you. I've enjoyed uh, discussing this with you as as always, and um, and look forward to everyone joining us in the conference. So, likewise, David. Thank you. <laughs> thank you.